Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're still enjoying the biomes, the environment stuff that I'm doing. As you can see, I'm really enjoying myself and I'm just outputting them as much as I can in my spare time. Um, yeah, this one again, a backcountry biome inspired by Red Dead Redemption. I love this game, played it a bunch. And uh, I hope you like this video. It goes about um, creating the terrains using a new tool set that I'm testing out. And then it also uses the usual scattering tools, labs, biomes, and all the fun stuff. And as usual, all the scene files are on my Patreon. Um, I've got quite the extensive um, library of scene files now, lots of new workflows, lots of Houdini stuff. Um, I started out with lots of Arnold and Maya stuff and then transitioned slowly to Houdini. Um, also using all of the times, but at the moment using Karma. Thank you for the support and I really appreciate everyone commenting on the video, joining the Discord and just um, yeah, supporting me and that really motivates me to just keep going. Thank you everyone. Let's get into this and we start out a nuke this time and we go then to Dini and back to nuke. So um, yeah, let's go. All right, everyone. So we are starting out a nuke today. As you can see, this is the final result. We have some anamorphic lenses. We've got some depth of field for the foreground, nice lens flaring, water, um, some trees, got some little huts in the distance and some rocks, obviously some mountain ranges. And that is kind of the look I was going for. I have my references up so you can see what um, inspired me to do this. So initially, it's obviously just some prompts, um, AI generated for, I don't know, some ideas. Obviously, if you look at the sun as in the foreground, which is quite stupid, but I like the kind of the feel of the sun, the placement, the little swamps. So this is kind of the reference I um, used. And it kind of reminded me of Red Dead Redemption. Um, it's kind of that era as well. You can see these are the huts with the trees. Um, I didn't have rocks or bigger shrubs, but I've got similar things. And obviously I'm missing the rider. Um, but yeah, that is my refs. And I think it's not too far off. I think they, they guided me pretty well in terms of creating this. And now I would say let's hop into Houdini and have a look what has been done. As usual, I am working almost fully in Solaris, which is LOPS, which is the USD framework in Houdini. And in all my previous videos, I learn and create more different workflows and build up on things. So you will notice things that are very similar to previous tutorials or previous scene files. But every time I'm just... Um, improving and you know trying to get better that is the whole goal why i create tutorials is to just learn software get better and share my findings with everyone else um, initially we started with a camera just created a camera here and i animated this camera that was i did the animation after the effect so this is just um, i created this edit at the bottom here, you can see this is where I edited, the animated the camera and just copied this to actually export me a USD camera so I can use a good placement in Nuke. Okay, now look, let's look into the terrain. The terrain is actually very interesting because it's using a very new uh, tool set. It, has, it is currently still under development uh, by Samuel Kruger and um, he's got his own Discord server. You can probably find the link in the description below. Um, it's Kruger Terrain Tools is the kind of abbrevi abbreviation for it. And yeah, as you can see, I've got quite a few of, of those nodes. It's uh, You can find it in tab menu on a Kruger Terrain Tools and just very cool stuff. And it's kind of a very unique way of working. It's similar to Gaia, lots of tools from Gaia and other DCCs, but um, it's kind of all obviously working in Houdini and it's super powerful and it's still in beta or even alpha, I don't know exactly, but um, keep an eye out uh, to get this. It's really nice and gives you a lot of control to create really stunning environments. As you can see, it's kind of doing something because I have some templated node at the bottom, the masher, so it's doing everything at the moment, but I can, I guess, just cancel this quick. Just walk you through the initial setup phase. Anyway, so height field, at the moment I've got it on, on 20, uh, 2048, uh, resolution and then essentially it's similar as a guy you can just create mountains and place them using enter so um, I can just place them wherever I want and I can you can stack them and I stack quite a few of them you can see now this is my mountain range uh, for the foreground and if I look through my shot camera you can see this is my camera so I had two views open 
and that I was placing these mountains using the different view. And oh, at the at the um, bottom, these are this is kind of my basic terrain. So you can see these are the basic mountains I placed. Then I'm resampling the height field to uh, 8K. And then I'm noising it up, adding just a little bit of breakup to everything, doing a little bit of blurring for these masks. And then I'm applying the terracing, uh, which just gives me some nice um, details on the cliffs. See that? Nothing too crazy, honestly. Then I'm doing more masking, and then comes a crazy cool note. It's called smooth fluvial erosion. Oh man, can't pronounce that. Um, and lots of amazing options in here to create stunning erosions and very realistic stuff. And uh, yeah, it's, I think, doing this already now in the background. But And I'm also using these masks at the bottom here. You can see they are kind of look quite organic and I'm using these to kind of push the terrain down you can see what it did and it allowed me to create these little puddles and I will fill them up with a water layer and these are the eroded um, cliffs I really pushed the channeling and the sediment removal to get these deep bridges looking through the shot camera you can now see we get these really deep bridges and then I'm applying some texture. I'm using some mega scan textures here that I can just use a triplanar and um, to project them on the geo. You can see it very simple. And I'm doing this several times. I'm combining them based on height. This is now a height um, mask. And then I'm combining two different mega scan textures to create some good details. Um, and keep in mind, we're working in 8K, so it's a little bit sluggish, but you can see we're adding these details and then I'm combining everything towards the end. And then these are my texture maps output. And then this is my cached final terrain, height fields. Then I'm converting this. And here's, uh, I'm doing some, um, th some things to add additional um, details on the cliffs. So I'm first mashing them and then, my, then I'm using the KTT cliff synthesizer, which it gives me um, additional detail uh, on the geometry. It's like, like a growth solver that kind of eats away from the geometry just to kind of get us feel of some uh, cliffs there. So that's kind of the terrain. And then I just create a really simple uh, water plane. And then I have my usual shader for the water very simple noise animated noise just to create some motion on it um, and then the terrain very simple shading honestly you can have a quick look um, i'm just using the images i wrote to disk i'm essentially all i'm doing is breaking up the roughness and i'm adding a uh, bump map triplanar to just get a little bit more details on the terrain uh, i'm talking about as you probably don't, you don't even see anything like this, but there's additional detail here, like little rocks and stuff in the foreground there. And then let's come to the grass. The grass is not just the grass, it's also the trees. And as usual, I'm using lab using the lab's biomes tools to allow me to easily scatter all these, um, yeah, grasses and, and um, uh, pine trees. So I'm using the height field and I'm generating essentially some attributes on the height field that tells um, the biomes scatter tool set where things are supposed to grow and are not supposed to grow. And if we look at the scatter itself, you can see that we have these three different species. Um, some are growing around the water puddles. So this is based on precipitation, based on rain. They grow only close to the water. And then I'm adjusting the height per like uh, where the pines grow versus the shrubs grow with temperature. So I can say they prefer a certain temperature value and then they will only scatter in those areas. And you can see that it's what's happening. So the, the greens are the pine trees and they kind of stop growing at this height. So because it kind of grow, go, goes higher and higher, um, it has a minimum height, essentially a minimum temperature and a maximum temperature. Um, and then the white is the bigger shrubs that grow around the water and the um, the pink stuff is essentially just basic grass. And then I'm instancing everything um, to, yeah, to make it work in, in lobs. So you can see if I zoom in here, um, this is kind of everything in the viewport. And then it's when we hit our poly limit, it just creates bounding boxes. Names, I wrote everything to disk, the scatter points. And then uh, we are already in most of the heavy lifting done, I would say. And then it's actually, let me think, what else we did? We did some placement. 
I scattered some de uh, debris all over the place based on height fields as well. You can see additional rocks scattered um, all over the height field, all over the mountain, similar as my previous tutorial, just um, creating a height field scatter, generating all these points using a height field mask by feature. And then we're just creating a single rock that we just copy to points on everything. So very basic stuff. Similar, um, again, I actually I copied these notes from my previous tutorial. These are using um, 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 logs essentially, and I'm scattering just kind of um, broken logs, old um, trees or whatever all over the ground. And you can all kind of see them here as well. Uh, actually, what did I press now? Uh, it's not that straightforward to see, but it's like these things. There are some logs all over the place, really simple, really um, hard to see, but I think they add in the end to the oval image. Um, let's see what else. We've got a cabin. This is just a free house um, textured. I'm just, I just found this on the internet, downloaded that, put that in here, placed a couple of them, moved them up and down from the shot camera, uh, not even sure why we don't see them at the moment. Oh, because I need this file transfer. So they are here essentially. Um, and then we have some hero trees. They are just imported um, USD trees. And I just placed them in the foreground. There's one and there's the other on the left. If you view from here, I just, instead of scattering them and hoping they would grow where I wanted to, I just created these hero trees and placed them um, where they were supposed to go. Um, and then we got the camera and the volume. So the volumes are in a, created in a different scene. Um, and we can have a quick look at them, but this is what they are. It's very basic volumes. And I just used them and placed them where the houses are. Um, yeah, that's kind of that. And then everything comes together and I have my render settings. I've got my crypto, um, crypto med outputs. Um, and then, yeah, outputs are, uh, one cool thing I learned is you can denoise AOVs as well, not just the, um, the beauty. So usually this is on C. If you put this on wildcard, essentially, this will just, uh, denoise every AOV, which is quite handy. And then I rendered with 64 samples in 4k, had added more diffuse bounces and then rendered everything. Let me think. Yeah, and then back in Nuke, the most noisy pass was the indirect spec after denoising. So this is this pass. If I play this, you can see, oh my God, look at this. This is the comma denoiser with really low sampling granted. And I'm using the neat video tool. It looks like this called reduce noise, neat video is the plugin which is paid, but it's a really good investment, I feel, because once you denoise it, okay, it's a little bit blurry, obviously, but it does temporal stability and it kind of gets rid of, I would say, most of the noise. It's a little bit blurry, but I, you could probably spend more time adjusting the settings inside of this, but this is like a day and night difference compared to the original versus the kind of um, yeah, denoised one, <laughs> the denoise after the denoise, essentially. Um, and for the comp, it's this is the raw render here. And oh, I didn't talk much about the the sun. The sun is a new kind of sun in Karma, which is under the physical sky. It's a sky mode, uh, um, atmospheric. What it does, you obviously can't place the light the same way as with the dome light but it out, you have way more controls about hazing and um, Rayleigh values, plus it outputs you a volume, which is awesome. And if you go back to Nuke, I'm talking about this. So it outputs you this and this as a volume, which you can um, obviously then grade after the fact. So this is from the render, a volume pass. And then obviously it has my volume plumes as well. Um, yeah, and then everything comes together and I did some minor comp um, for, let's see what this for the water puddles. I just lifted them slightly. They were a little bit black in the shadows. So just a little bit of a lift using crypto mats. These are my crypto mats. Uh, where are they? 
I was pressing all the buttons here. Here was my crypto mats. And I was just, uh, I, I could just pick the water and then grade the water. Then I played with the haze a little bit and increased the scatter quite a lot on the grass. I think that added quite a nice value to everything and darkened the diffuse, um, indirect diffuse. It was a bit too bright in the foreground. Um, yeah, and that is most of the comp stuff you can see before and after. Let's see, before and after. So you can see I, I pushed the value still quite a bit. Maybe this is not great what I did here. This was too much. That's probably the volume that I lifted. No, which one is it? Oh, was it this one? Oh yeah, okay, maybe I shouldn't have done that. I used a Z-Pass to lift the trees here, but yeah, probably should have done that. Maybe I need to rerun this. Um, and then using ZD Focus to apply the depth of field. And on the right, I tried to use a sky and place it with the camera, but I in the end didn't do it because I kind of like the sky. Then comes the anamorphic lens distortion stuff, similar as my previous videos. I added the glow on the, on the sun, added like a little bit of a fill um, with the diffusion model, astigmatism to create some, you know, lensing. Essentially, it's blurring outside of the camera. Then some chromatic aberration because that happens quite a lot on anamorphic lenses. You can see how strong this is. Um, and then optical flares to create this nice anamorphic lens effect, putting that on top, adding a vignette, regrain, adding some film grain on it might be a bit strong actually looking at this now. Maybe I just reduced that a bit, maybe four. Yeah, that's better. Um, and then out goes the render and that's essentially the final result. And these are my iterations. I did three versions, one, two, three. No big differences. Played a bit with the water, the shader, and then I added more detail on the rocks here. And then obviously now we changed it up. So my V4 that we just did live is now this versus this. So yeah, this looks crappy and probably it's better if I fix this and rerun it. Um, yeah, and then we are back to the final result, which is this guy here. And yeah, I hope this was a good overview and I hope you learned something. And obviously the scene files are on Patreon and I really appreciate you guys showing me the support by uh, grabbing the scene files and just, um, yeah, commenting, joining the discord and leaving comments on the video below. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed this backcountry labs biome. Uh, as usual, always fun for me and I'm happy to see you in the next video. Thank you.